Today at Free Field Training, we are going to talk about learning geography for new cops. Whether you work out in a county or in a city, you're going to have to learn every little nuance of the town or the county or the area that you work in, especially all of us locals. I have to know every little alley and T alley and dead end in the town that I work in, and a lot of you are in the same situation. And GPS does not cover everything we need to know because GPS can't tell us where that house is going to be so we can park three doors down from it. GPS is not going to give us the route that bypasses the kids getting out of school. We need to actually know the geography of the area we're working in for our safety and the safety of the public and so we can get to calls in some sort of a reasonable amount of time, especially when somebody else is, is screaming for help. All right, so we're going to start off with how you begin when you're at the very beginning points of trying to learn geography of your town, and we're going to assume you've never been in that town before. Stick around. Where are you going? Get out of the way! All right, so let's pretend, best case scenario, you've got a little town, very small geographic things going on with it. Not a whole lot of stuff. We're going to take that small town and we're going to learn it together. So the first thing you need to learn about your jurisdiction when you start working there is where the outside edges of the jurisdiction are. So we're going to draw ours today and for our purposes today our jurisdiction is going to be kind of a rectangle. And we're going to have to learn what jurisdictions are around it. You need to know what's around your community before you can really understand the dynamics of what's going on in it. So this is our town. We'll call this uh, Bumbleville, right? And then around Bumbleville, on, on the north and west ends of Bumbleville, we're going to call this, let's say... Clairesville, right? All that's Clairesville. And then on the east side of town, over here, in a little corner of the south end of town, all this is going to be Bumsville. And then on the south end, we're going to call this county. It's an unincorporated area on the south end of your town. But this is the area you're responsible for when you first start working with the department. In order to pass field training, you're going to need to know everything that's inside of the square and a little bit on the outskirts of it. You're going to at least have to know the outside of your jurisdiction and what it borders against. This is going to be important for interoperations and when something you have leaves your jurisdiction. Right? So that's the start. So our town is a clean slate. We know what the borders are and these borders we're going to assume for this circumstance are major streets. They can easily be rivers or railroad tracks. Lots of natural things are the dividers of towns. So we're just going to assume for this matter, that these are streets. We're not going to name all the streets because my memory is not that good for just making stuff up as I go, which I am because we're shooting this live. If you want to see all of the comments and questions from the people that were on live, check up there by that little eye icon or the link down in the description and you can see the conversation that we had after we got done with this video. So these are major streets. Major streets we're going to have in red at least for the time being. Let's say your town is bisected by one street here. And we'll call that Maine just for the purposes of discussion and to keep up with our running gag that we have from all the note-taking videos. Links for those down below, also up there. And then the other major street we're going to call 4th Street. We're going to pretend like we're every little town in the world and we've got a 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th Street because no one knows how to come up with names for streets. Now we've got these, we've bisected our town. And these are all of our, let's say these are all of our major streets. There could be lots of other major streets in here. There could be diagonal streets and stuff like that. But for our purposes, for learning how to learn geography, this is all we really need to know. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use two or three different methods. Learning methods that work to learn anything in life. 
The first one and the one that works best for me and for a lot of people that I train is called chunking. Now chunking is where you take a small section of something and you learn just that and then you attach it to other things so you make a framework for yourself. So for me, I'm taking the town and the major streets and I'm going to make that the framework for the chunks. The other thing we're going to need to do is have reference points on the major streets for our chunks so we can get into particular neighborhoods. Makes sense so far? Hopefully it does. So I'm going to take this and each of these I'm going to bisect up by the sub-secondary streets, right? These are streets that have lights on them that are not major streets. So you've got a two-lane road or a road with no lane markings, but there's a traffic light at it. Again, in real life, this is probably going to be a lot more complex, but I'm simplifying it for conversation. Now, at each one of these intersections, we have a reference point. These are all going to be traffic lights. So as the new guy, I get given a map. And that map of the town is going to have the major streets, your minor streets that have lights on it, and all the little streets in between. But none of this stuff's going to be marked. So I'm going to tell my new person, pull your map out. I want you to go through, and we are going to circle all of the street lights. Now, some of these might not have street lights in real life. Two sub-secondary streets coming together might not have a traffic signal. But for our purposes, we're going to assume that they do. And what this is going to tell us is where we can go at to get into a chunk, and we're going to make this a chunk. We can separate this area down into two chunks and learn just the geography of that little part of town, even smaller than our chunks. But we're going to assume that our chunks are going to be the areas in between blocks of traffic lights. So we're going to take one chunk, and we're going to learn just that chunk, and we're going to talk about it. Let's say we're going to learn about a chunk right here. We're going to call this little green box area the chunk that we're learning in here. Let's say there's five or six streets going north and south in our little area, and let's say there's three, there's two streets going east and west. So now we've got a whole bunch of blocks in here. We're going to learn about this little area of the town. Area of the town, there's going to be a particular number system. So let's say our number system goes north to south, it gets larger. So this is going to be the one two zero 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 block and this is going to be the one two one zero zero block hopefully you all can see that so this is the one two zero 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 block and this is the one two one zero zero block and these streets all have names we're going to learn the names in order in that chunk so we might say this is Green Bay Mackinac Buffalo Superior okay and so if we need to know how to get to one two zero five eight Mackinac, we're going to know that it's going to be 120 and it's going to be south of there and 58 is going to be about halfway through the block and that's the second street in from our side street and so we're going to know that that's where the house is going to be and we're not going to have to go looking for that number really we know we can go about a quarter way down the block get out of the car and go to that house does that make sense for everybody we're going to learn this little chunk there's a couple ways we can learn it one is by going around and driving that chunk we can take addresses from the in-house computer system that we've had calls to before, and we can go to those addresses. And this does two things. It familiarizes us with the addresses and the address breaks in that area, and it also familiarizes us with problem houses in that area. So that helps. We're going to learn this one little chunk that way. The other way we're going to learn is we take our map that we were issued by the department, and we're going to draw that map, and we're going to put our reference points on it. So we're going to draw, take that little section of map, we're going to draw it the size of an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, and we're going to put all the side streets on it, all the address breaks, especially if they're weird address breaks. If this address breaks actually 12038, and this one's 12148, we're going to need to know those address breaks so that we can know where we're going at. But let's say we have a normal town with a normal address break system. We learn these numbers, and of course up here, you're going to have... 11900 on that street. So you know that the break area in between these is going to be about 11950 on there. Most towns work 
somewhat this way. Or you have to memorize the address breaks, in which case that kind of sucks for you, but it's something you're going to have to do. And the system to learn it is still the same. So we learn this little chunk, and then we're going to learn the chunk next to it, and we're going to connect those together in our brain. So I'm going to know that I can turn off of 3rd Street and go two blocks down and hang a left. I'm going to be on Mackinac, and I go up a block and a half, and that's 12158. Now, the other issue with learning geography is once you start getting these major street grids together and you start doing little chunks of addresses, you need to have geographic locations that you can navigate by. Because it's great to do this, and this works great when you think about it from an administrative point of view on day shift, but as soon as it gets dark out, it all goes away. There's nothing you can do. Once, you get, once it gets dark out, you're not going to see the sign for Mackinac over here. You're not going to see the sign for 2nd Street. You need to know where stuff is. And you're going to need to know where stuff is without seeing the signs. You have to remember what that intersection looks like. So you're going to have to tie it down to businesses that aren't going to change. So I wouldn't use title loans or uh, chicken places or nail salons that are going to change all the time as places that are my geographic locations that I'm going to remember, oh yeah, that's the place. But a few things that you can use to learn that early on when you're new to a town, things like water towers, those don't tend to move. Things like public buildings, libraries, the fire station, the address of the police station is a great one, city hall, I guess not if those are all the same building because you got a town this size. But in larger cities, you can use those types of public buildings. Shopping malls are really good for that. So are weird businesses. You have a business that has you know, a, a statue out front that's 10 feet tall that you can see easily at night. You need to remember, okay, that statue is on the corner of Mackinac and Maine. So here's our statue of a Colossus in Mackinac and Maine. And then I know when I see that statue, that's Mackinac and Maine. I don't have to look for the little tiny sign at night or have to take my spotlight out and go looking for it. This will become more important as you get older and your eyesight starts going bad. So here's some quick hacks for learning all of these systems. We've already talked about drawing the area, and we've already talked about driving around the area using CAD locations, locations in the computer that you have previous calls at to learn the, heart, the hot spots in your town and learn the address breaks. One other thing is when you've got a town that has a bunch of names and they're not in alphabetical order and they don't make a whole lot of sense, you can come up with a saying that uses the first letters of all of the names. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever done that type of thing in school with math where you're trying to come up with, okay, what What's the Pythagorean theorem? Okay, well, I, I remember it's blah, 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 blah. It's the, the little mnemonic methods in order to learn street names. I mentioned that to people. It doesn't work for me, so I can't think of one off the top of my head. But I have had a few trainees that it's worked very well for, coming up with a mnemonic mechanism to learn streets in order. It helps some people out. I generally have to do it just by root memorization. I memorize the streets in that block, and then once I memorize the streets in that block, I move to the block next to it, and I memorize those streets along with it. So I make one big, long line memorization one way across the town, and I try to do that in the order of the addresses, so that way I know it goes up as I'm saying it. Uh, one thing to think about is the location of your police station when you're learning geography. The way you learn geography is going to be very different if the police station is right here than if the police station is down here. The reason for this is simple. When you're memorizing addresses in order, you're trying to come up with those mnemonic mechanisms, or you're trying to remember what the, where the blocks are at, you have to know the likely direction you're going to be coming from. So with a police station as being your main hub of operations, regardless of where it's at, it makes sense, since that's the point you're going to be starting at every day, you start memorizing things from that location. So if you're in the middle of town, for a lot of people with geography, it makes sense to memorize this way. So we start with a square here, and we're going to learn that chunk, and then we attach this chunk to it, and that chunk to it, and that chunk to it, and we go outward from the police station. So that way, when I'm trying to remember those addresses, I remember, all right, I come out of the parking lot, and it's Hoxie Calhoun Bensley Yates going that way. And it's 154, 155, 156 Street heading that way. So I have my reference point, and then I learn from there. 
Now, if I'm coming from the police station down here all the time, it's down in the corner of town, I'm going to memorize it differently. I'm going to go from the station this way. I'm going to learn this chunk, and then these chunks, and then this chunk, and then this chunk, when I'm trying to chunk together and learn those street names. Again, not a big deal on day shift. At 3 o'clock in the morning, when you have to rely on root memorization, it becomes an enormous deal. Trust me on this one. So that is my basic outline of how you learn geography. From just setting a basic grid and knowing what's on the outskirts of town, to learning the inside areas of the towns by chunking and attaching those to geographic locations that you're gonna be able to see at three o'clock in the morning when it's dark out and you're driving 60 miles an hour, to what direction you wanna learn this stuff in when you're memorizing street names so that way it makes sense in the way that you're actually going to use it on the street. You might want to change it a little bit depending on where you drive out of. You might have a station and then have a public works facility you'll get your cars from. Make up your own mind on which way makes more sense. One thing that I will caution you with is whatever way you learn this, you're not going to relearn it. Relearning things, as anybody has tried to learn the phonetic alphabet in the military way and then had to do the civilian law enforcement way later, will tell you is way more difficult than just learning it the way you want to use it the first time. So again, those links down in the description, up in that little eye. If you want to see the conversation we had after this, all the comments and questions from the people who watched it on the live stream on YouTube, check that out. Links down below, also up there. And if you never want to miss out on the behind the scenes of one of these videos for free field training, Instagram, that is Tommy underscore free field training on Instagram. And you can see a lot of my live streams as they're happening and for 24 hours after. Until next week, you guys be safe. And take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, why don't you go check out one of our other videos? Or you can head on over to the Patreon and say I can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks listed over here. There's also some exclusive content on Patreon that just shows you kind of behind the scenes like you're seeing now. We'll see you guys next time. It's like the 400th time I've taught this.